of the three Victoria specials that I've seen from the show, only one really made me entertain and actually really enjoy this show when it comes to its characters, and that's Toy Girls Platinum. The special opens up with a contest going on. Whoever wins it will be will be the opening member of the Platinum Musical Awards, where they sing on stage in front of a, a crowd audience. Unlike the crowd audience that Tori and her friends go through in school and in to a different country, which was in All Locked Up, the winner would get the chance to be able to perform their song in front of a law in front of a live audience. That's pretty much a really important opportunity for anyone to actually get their dreams come true. And considering the fact that Tori Baker is a really great singer in this, she obviously wins the contest. However, what she doesn't know is that the producer, whose name Mason by the way, really wants her to change her look, completely change her attitude and the way that she dresses. And if you see so many Hollywood movies slash episodes or anything, you pretty much know where this is going. Every time Tori goes to school or anywhere, she has to wear a different costume while also acting completely different, and people are really not impressed whatsoever. And what makes this even more complicated for her is that she has to be really aggressive and rude to people in order to make the to, in order to have her performance at the music awards happen. And to be quite honest, this is really what this episode, this special is really about. When Tori, it's when Tori won a contest that she wants to be part of the music awards, singing on stage, she ends up trying to do some different taxes, not taxes, taxes of just trying to impress the producer while also just trying to be rude to so many people around her. It's kind of like the episode Beck's Big Break where the actress was being rude to everyone and just demands the producer or director to fire them off stage. But unlike in that episode when it's just forced mean-spirited, this is something that Tori needs to learn and also have to be herself in order to make her performance at the Music Awards amazing. One of the reasons on to why this Victoria special is better than the other two, in my opinion, is mainly the fact that Tori needs to learn something in order to get to get to the top of becoming one of the best singers in Hollywood arts, but also on TV. You see, the thing is, Mason, the producer, just wants to see something from the people who completely won a contest so that they can actually fit with the audience. But if you be yourself, it will probably work out at the end. And Tori was having this issue on just trying to actually be trying to impress the producer, but instead of doing that, she ends up turning her friends away from her. To be quite honest, drama is obviously a serious subject that people of anyone that you met who is a producer or owns a record company will obviously do everything in their authorities to change you if you won a contest. Because every time I actually see this type of stuff, we all know that this happens in real life. I mean, the dreams that you've been chasing after and then this gets in the way, you have to face the fact that this will happen no matter what. Which is something that I do understand happens in the real world. The scenes where we get to see Tori into different costumes was obviously amusing and stylized, but you can really tell that she really cannot stand that. But she's just trying to do what's right for the producer, but she isn't doing it for herself. It honestly makes me really admire of what she's going through in this episode, all because she won a contest that was really, really important for so many musical singers in Hollywood odds. Because let's be honest, if we will, if we actually see a contest going on similar to what's going to happen, of what's happening in this special, we will probably be part of it. We will probably participate because you know that this is a really huge opportunity for anyone to sing on live TV. And that what really makes the special a lot more entertaining the more I think about it. Even though that this was, this was during the time where iCarly was about to come to an end and Sam and Cat was coming next year and Henry Danger isn't going to be a thing until the next following two years by the time of this premiere in 2020, 2012, sorry. This special really made me disappointed that this show didn't continue. Now yes, Nickelodeon made a contract with a 
three or four year old with a music company, Sony, I think, Sony Music, if, that, if I'm correct, on to making music videos involving Big Time Rush and in this show. But if this show actually did continue, we'll probably have a fifth season of Victorious, then uh, Sam and Cat. No offense, but Sam and Cat isn't really a great show. Now, I understand that there's so many reasons on to why Toy Big, the Victoria Justice had his re had a reasonings on not doing more episodes of Victorious, but considering the fact that she's been in Nickelodeon since Zoe 101 on whatever season season or episode she appeared in, I honestly think that she wanted to do other things other than just continuing on with her show, which was which is Victorious. Before I get into Jade in this special, let's go talk about the subplot between Cat and her addiction to Bibble. Bibble is a British candy from British, I guess, and Cat has a really difficult time on tonight eating so much Bibble because of how addictive it is. And people around her decide to stop her from eating so much Bibble. Here's one of the reasons onto why I think that one of these subplots works in these type of specials. Mainly the fact that it doesn't take up most of the time in this special, and it's mostly a comedy gag between Cat and her obsession with Bibble. So I honestly think that these type of subplots actually works in the wine time of this special. If it's mainly for a comic, comically gag, then just hammering in just for a subplot. I know I keep mentioning that the subplots in this are just really nothing but filler, but considering that there's so many characters in these shows, I honestly think that the only way to use them and pay them is to put them into these type of situations. Not the Bibble subplot that I'm showing you right now. I'm talking about the other subplots I've seen from this show and another sitcom show. Even though that I do not like Cat in the show and in Sam and Cat, I still found her subplot hilarious to the point that she had to buy, she had to use all of her, which is this character right here, to prevent her, to have him prevent her from eating any more bibble. Really goes to show that she's really obsessed with it. Because at the end of the special, right after Tori's performance of Make It in America, we get to see Oliver completely eating bibble with cats because he's also too obsessed with it. A really great way to end this off along with the Make It to America sequence because it's actually really hilarious to the point that no matter what you do involving something that you enjoy the most, you will keep continuing it and you will keep being addicted to it. But I've already mentioned that in my in my That's So Raven When the Smoke episode review that I've uploaded this month. Before any of you ask, yes, I am aware that Beck and Jade are completely broke up before this special, but I didn't watch it. But I know full well that even if I didn't watch that episode, I can really tell that what they did in this special, I can really understand the relationships between the relationship between Tori, Jade, and Beck. Granted, I'm not really a shipper in these type of shows, but considering the struggle that Jade went through and the fact that she didn't win, and the, the, and the fact that Tori won instead of Paul really, ma really makes you admire the struggle and depression that she's dealing with. Because unlike the time where she completely dumps back in the very first season, which was her dumping, it wasn't like we are finished, it was just Jay dumping back. This time, she's really mostly depressed that she has to move on from what she completely, when she was, when she part ways with back. And considering of how she's mostly in the background until nearly the third quarters of, I think that makes sense, in this special where she actually gets the opportunity to be part of the music awards, you can really tell that you mostly a my hope, but at the same time, she is Jade. She's just basically like Sam, except that she actually does not side with the main character most of the time. Well, all the, but well, I'm just saying most of the time because you pretty much know for a while that Jade and Tori aren't really the best of friends in the earlier seasons of this show. Back at Tori's house, Beck and uh, Tori had a conversation with someone recording it while they didn't see it. To be quite honest, I honestly think that this scene between Jade watching the video of Beck and Tori almost kissing each other, 
you would think that she will easily go very violent against Toya or just mostly heartbroken. But the way how this scene is turned out really makes every really makes this really a, a great way to actually see on how Toy feels about Jade no matter what. And correction, I know this was live, it wasn't recorded, it's just live. I have I know I've made so many mistakes, but I've already pointed that mistake out right now. Anyway, the fact that Beck and Toy refuses to kiss each other because it's just not right to become boyfriend and girlfriend after the dumping between Beck and Jade. It's one of those things that just doesn't work in real life because you pretty much know full well that if you ever do something like that after the breaking relationship in a really serious matter that isn't what you think it is, you pretty much don't want to make a continuous opportunity that is just thrown out the window and you just steal it just so that you can become that person's boyfriend or girlfriend. That really makes one of these moments really really make this special a lot more entertaining and probably one of the reasons that I might consider on watching more episodes of the show if I ever have the time. Because let's be real here, even if Jay got almost got her opportunity to perform on stage, she wouldn't like it because she's dressed like an idiot. That outfit is what she's going to sing on stage. I honestly don't know who come up with this, but considering the fact that it's a fusion of so many pop stars and science fiction materials into one pop star singing outfit, I honestly don't know what else to believe. It's actually kind of humorous and it just really hammers in on the fact that Jade is with Grappa and completely give Toy back her opportunity that she owned in the first place. Anyway, let's get into the performance of Toy's Make It to America. It's probably one of the best songs I've heard from the show and how it's portrayed really great that lead that really well, that what we that what we've seen from this whole special. It's a really good payoff after everything we've seen between Toei and her friends and the struggle that she went through. And all honestly, with this song being part of my background music, which is only instrumental, really makes this a really great way to actually show off how amazing this song is, despite the fact that you're not hearing any lyrics, but then again, I'm avoiding copyright. I really found this a great way to end off this special, especially of how great constructed the special is. As for Mason, who is the producer in this special, I honestly think that his motivations is obviously justified no matter what you make it out to be, or what you see in him. Unlike other characters that I mostly cannot stand, I can easily tell away his performance mainly the fact that he just wants to actually make the music performance really great by wearing a different outfit, by having the winner wear a different outfit while also acting completely differently. To me, that's just basically what Hollywood always does no matter what, and if I was ever in this situation, I would try to get used to it, but when I completely think about it and how it's not going to affect, I would probably have a conversation with the producer on to how it should not work in a way that people would not enjoy the performance in the music awards. I really don't go against him in this episode, in this special, because for one, he's just basically all the other producers, except that he isn't power hungry or money grabbing, that type of person. He's just basically a plain producer, just trying to give someone else's dream who won the contest to perform in front of a live audience at the Platinum Music, at the Platinum music Awards. That's just enough to understand onto why everything that's been going on in the special is mostly justified from what he's been doing and how Tori is just trying to actually do the right thing for not only for everyone, but for her, but for herself in general. And besides, out of the three specials I've seen from the show, I can consider this one of my favorites and it's actually really depressing that this is the final 44 minute special from the show right before it got cancelled. I mean, it had a start at the beginning of the show, but it didn't got an ending. Unlike That's So Raven, where it didn't have a beginning and end, 
this show had a beginning, and it should have an end once in some other way. I was, I'm was, i assuming that at the end, Toy Vega would become a really popular pop star singer, and she would continue on with her life as a pop star, despite the sacrifices that she made, but since we never got that, it's honestly really hard to believe that this show got cancelled. I know I've mentioned this stuff before, involving Victoria Justice's motivations and stuff like that, but if that didn't happen, I honestly think that there could have been an opportunity to actually see a fifth season of this show with more episodes instead of just 13, because the first season had almost 20 episodes, while the rest of the seasons barely had 15 episodes. I honestly don't know why Dan Snyder decided to make less episodes per season, but it's honestly his own decision making when it comes to Sony Music's into Sony Music's agreement to make so many songs for this show. So anyway, I think I talk about this special long enough. I give this special a 9 out of 10. Yes, the special actually gets that high of a rating. It's way better than the first two specials. I recommend you watching this when you get to season 3. But do not skip the Jade and Beck episode because that's really important since that, that episode is connected to this special.